Part 34. I do the right thing eventually. I started living two parallel but very different realities. When I was with Melody, all I could think about was how lucky I was that she wanted to spend her time with me. Melody was a queen. We went to antique shows, and she haggled for more of the knickknacks she liked to display in her house. We went to arcades and played pool and racing games for hours. We competed in mini golf, and while she was fiercely competitive, she wasn't obnoxiously competitive. She also won 90% of the time because she was incredible. We affectionately held hands for for all the walking we did. We embraced at every greeting and goodbye. There was never a question of with whom I would be spending my time after work. I felt so good having a person. Never in my life had somebody chosen me over and over again, every time. I did not have to compete for her attention. We were together, we seemingly loved each other, and I was happier than I had ever been in my whole life. I love you, Melody. I loved you then, I love you now, and I will love you forever. My actions, behaviors, and obviously these inappropriate words do not properly show love, and I am intelligent enough to know how horrible I sound throughout these stories. Even the number of times I describe your physical attractiveness is at odds with how I really feel. As the flawed human being I am, I love you, your personality, your kindness, your grace and charm, and only wish you great outcomes and happiness. Not that my wishes matter. You do not need them, and they are worthless to you. Unfortunately, when I wasn't with Melody, all I did was search the internet for herpes information. I learned everything there was to know about herpes. HSV-1 is a virus that primarily affects the mouth and face, but can also affect genitals after oral sex. HSV-2 is a virus that primarily affects the genitals, but in very rare cases can also affect the mouth and face. HSV-1 causes an initial outbreak on the lips and then hides somewhere in the brain stem where the body's immune system can't detect it and reactivate it any time for the rest of a person's life. HSV-2 causes an initial outbreak on the genitals and then hides somewhere at the base of the spine where the body's immune system can't detect it and can reactivate it any time for the rest of a person's life. Herpes has no cure or vaccine, but medication management can lessen the severity of symptoms. Severity of symptoms will also lessen over time as the body adapts to playing host to the virus. A person with herpes is most infectious when there are visible sores, but asymptomatic shedding means a person can be infectious even without visible sores. Men catch herpes less than women due to women having more of an exposed entry point for infection. About one in every eight men have herpes, and about one in every five women have herpes. Some people do not ever show symptoms. Sores are viral fluid-filled vesicles that burst and crust over. The scabs fall off and do not leave scars. When triggered, herpes travels via the nervous system between the skin and its hiding place. Like COVID-19, you can't predict how your body is going to react to the virus. Obviously, being healthy bodes well for the experience. Melody and I never really talked about her particular infection because I knew she lived with genital herpes for 10 years when we met and that it was a sensitive topic. So I felt a lot of shame spending every morning sipping coffee while scrolling through gross pictures of active outbreaks. During one of our last dates, we visited my apartment's swimming pool. To date, it's the only time I've ever used my apartment swimming pool. When I watched her emerge from the steps, coming off the ladder like that famous movie scene, I knew I had to tell her. She was dating me with intent, and I was dating her with deception. I couldn't get on board with the risk. Even a condom only reduces the chance of infection by 30% because it doesn't cover all the areas from which the herpes virus sheds. And even though she is only contagious a few days a month, which amounts to a 2-5% to risk of infection a year, I knew if I caught herpes and she dumped me, I would never find love again. On the flip side, she would definitely survive a breakup with dumbass Jason. That night, our hot and heavy making out led us to stripping down to our underwear again, and in the throes of passion, I blurted out, I would love to tear off your panties and fuck the shit out of you. 
This time she paused and acknowledged the flaw in our relationship and urged me to finish my thought. But... I caught myself and said, but, well, we still have a couple days left on our no-sex therapy assignment. Melody sighed and said, I wish you'd fuck the shit out of me. That night, she handed me a letter she wrote at home, documenting all the things about me she loved. I cried while reading her note alone in my apartment. Today, seeing it hits differently, but we're not there yet in this book. <laughs>